6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. December 25th, 2021. As many were gathering with family and opening presents on Christmas Day, NASA, the European Space Agency, and the Canadian Space Agency were eagerly watching the launch of the James Webb Space Telescope. Decollage liftoff from a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself. James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe. The $10 billion observatory took a quarter century to reach that point, and the launch was just step one. A journey of a million miles brought Webb to its final destination, the second Lagrange point, a stable parking spot for it to peer into the distant past of the universe. Over the next several days, Webb began unfurling and unfolding its various pieces and instruments. Sunshield now keeps them at a frigid 36 degrees Kelvin or about negative 394 degrees Fahrenheit. And all that work led to this. The first deep field image from Webb released last July, dotted with thousands of galaxies from billions of years ago. When that first image downloaded a year ago, it was, it was such a joyful moment because not only are we seeing just the beauty of this observatory and, and really speaking to the many, many hours and people that put in time to make this feat of engineering, um, we're also seeing just, you know, it's kind of this long awaited beauty of the science that we can get from it. Dr. Taylor Hutchison's fascination with astronomy began in her undergrad and graduate college years in Texas before she eventually joined NASA. She's captivated by what NASA's largest observatories like Hubble and Webb can teach us about the universe. It's been a really beautiful process of really just kind of continuing to study galaxies like this. I've started pushing as far back in time as I can, so trying to find the most distant galaxies I possibly can and studying them because, you know, trying to really get a better understanding of how do these galaxies evolve to the ones that we live in today. And my colleagues, it's the same thing. We're just all kind of trying to piece together these pieces of a puzzle to really get a better understanding of the universe. A full year of capturing data and dazzling images was capped off on this July 12th with this, a star forming region of what's called the Rho Ophiuchi Cloud Complex. It's actually the closest star forming region to Earth at about 390 light years away. What you're seeing are about 50 young stars that are in the process of forming and growing. And I think what's really striking about this image is the, depending upon the part of the image that you're looking at, the dark regions or these bright red lava looking jets, you know, you're seeing different kinds of star formation happening. And so the dark regions are showing you these baby stars that are just starting to form, kind of enshrouded in these cl clouds of gas and dust. And then these bright lava looking like horizontal and vertical stripes are showing you molecular jets of just material that are being shot out from these bigger stars that are starting to form. And then my favorite part, the bright white region in the bottom left corner is actually a star really close to the size of our sun. It's just a little bit bigger. And it's actually creating this cave essentially in, in the dust as it's forming. And so it's kind of blowing out material. And so you're seeing just a very chaotic star forming region essentially. And this is just the beginning. Given the efficiency with which Webb launched a year and a half ago, it could very well provide observations for the next 20 years. I'm looking forward to continuing to push the boundaries of this observatory. Like how far back in time can we look? What are the most distant galaxies that we can find? But then also, like you said, I'm really excited for the things that we just don't know yet, that we can't find. And it's, it's really exciting. So definitely stay tuned for this next year of science and future years. Um, it's going to be great.